because he had seen that, then he knew that there was something special going on. So he was always keeping his eye on Srila Prabhupada. So he said that this was the last year of the Parikrama, the last year that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati conducted that before he left this world. And it was the last evening. And somehow that morning, uh, we think it was Ban Maharaj who had come back from England. And he had come on a boat and then he had entered in and come to Navadweep and apparently met with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. <coughs> So uh, everyone knew about it and everybody was kind of interested in what, what had happened because in those days the communications weren't so good. And so this uh, devotee noticed that that evening when, when their Guru Maharaj was going to give the lecture, there was thousands and thousands of people at Champahata. They were all, first of all, there was tents everywhere. And then all the devotees and all the pilgrims were crowded close in to hear under this big pandal to hear the last lecture of that parikrama. And uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati stood up there on the podium in a very beautiful way and he began to speak. This is from the memory of Nayananda Das Babaji. He began to speak about how much uh, it was his deep and sincere desire that this Krishna consciousness would go across the ocean and that it would go to the West and it would save the world. And he began by speaking about his guru, his father, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he began saying how he had had this vision and how he had always told him about this vision with, in very clear terms and had imposed upon him that this vision, you may have to you know, take on this vision. If, if not, you know, I'm trying, I'm sending my books, I'm doing, but this will definitely come to pass. But you, know, you must make it part of your sincerest service. And then he told how he had tried to do that so far and he had sent out some disciples to London and uh, had tried to uh, send them with Lakshmi and that that Lakshmi had come from the blood of the Gaudiya Math from the Brahmacharis who had gone out with pi for Pisces collecting. And somehow or other, still after you know several attempts, it was not successful. And then he told about his mother, Bhagavati Devi. And he said, um, sh when my mother was leaving from this world, she called me to her bedside and she gave me one order upon my head. She said, your father, he wanted very much that this Krishna consciousness would be exploding everywhere in, in the Western countries, that it would become so much popular in every town and village. He wanted this, and it hasn't yet come to pass, so you do it. So then he spoke out to his audience of disciples and followers, and he said, so I am beseeching you. This is the order upon my head. He said, and um, I, uh, I'm asking each and every one of you to also make it your, your service as well. But then he did something very amazing. He started to scan the audience. And Nayananda Das Babaji said that he was stand, like very far on this side of the, uh, the audience. But he noticed that behind him was our Srila Prabhupada, who was then still a Grihasta. And he noticed it because he had waved to him and everything. And he was behind him, though, and to the side. So he said that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Prabhupada started like just looking in the audience very deeply like this. And then when he got over to that side, he stopped, and almost like a radar, he just started staring. And at first, Nayananda Das Babaji thought he was looking at him, and so he kind of went, and then he realized, no, it wasn't me, and he looked behind him, and he saw, and he said he thinks he was maybe the only person that saw, because he knew that personality of our Srila Prabhupada. He said he saw that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's vision, his eyes, were locked with our Srila Prabhupada's in a very deep, deep um, glance with each other. He said it was so deep you could almost cut it. And then he said that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Prabhupada then turned and he looked back into the center and he said the whole front was filled with saffron and all the sannyasis and all the great preachers and everything and he said, but he goes, I have a, I have a prediction. 
He said, I want to make one prediction. He said, I predict that the next one of my disciples who travels across the ocean, however long in the future that may take, that disciple, he'll bring back the whole world. He heard someone calling out his name, Abhay Charanaravinda. But he was already a sannyasi, so he didn't use that name anymore. And so he was thinking, who's calling me like that in the middle of the night? So he didn't get up at first, he was just writing. And then later, he kept hearing that voice, so he went out and he went into the courtyard of the deities, but he didn't. Then he heard the voice coming from by where the samadhi of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is. And so he paid obeisances at the different samadhis, and then he was paying obeisances at his Gurudev Samadhi. And, and then he had some Swarti Darshan of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta wherein Srila Prabhupada asked him, I am calling you? He goes, uh, uh, but why are you still here? I've asked you to go to... No, he, he goes, I've asked you to go to the West. Why you haven't gone? And then Prabhupada said something like, well, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to go. And then his guru said, why do you think I have named you Abhai Charanaravinda? Because you are fearless, because you have taken shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. So don't worry. He goes, it's all been arranged. You just go. And then... Prabhupada said something like, uh, but I, I don't, I, I'm not seeing the path yet, you know, I'm not seeing a facility, I don't, it hasn't come. And then uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said something like, um, I have the exact words here, something like, uh, oh, he goes, don't you know that it's already all been arranged? He goes, for so long, uh, across the ocean, there are so many of them, and they have been calling for you. And they have been crying for you. So you must go. Now is the time. Now is the time. He says, so just begin. Don't even hesitate. Just begin and it will, it will be revealed to you how to go. So apparently right after that, Srila Prabhupada packed up from Vrindavan and he uh, went to Delhi. And he used to go like in this very humble, kind of like a beggar, you know, like a sannyasi beggar way. He would go to all these like Arya Samajam and just different groups and civic groups. And he would speak and say, my Guru Maharaj has given me this mission. And he has told me that somehow or other it's been arranged. So I'm just waiting to find the person who he has talked about, who's helping to arrange this. So if there's anyone in this audience, you please come. And so that was when he met the... Um, the secretary for Sumar, Sumati Maraji, and he gave her a le- he gave him a letter of introduction, and then he went to Bombay. This I heard at both. I heard from some devotees from um, Saraswatmat and from Devananda Gaudiya that when Srila Prabhupada came back, I think it was the first time. Yeah, the first time when he just had. Uh, what was the name of that devotee? Rama, Ramanuja, and uh, maybe it was a Chutananda with him. And uh, so he visited both of his old friends, Srila Keshwar Maharaj and Srila Shudra Maharaj. And uh, he brought that reel to reel tape recorder too, and he had it blaring really loud. And uh, the devotees would come from far and wide and just mesmerize. They would just be stunned and, and crying and amazed that this was really true, that it actually had happened. And so that first evening that he came back at Devananda Gonimath, he told when he gave that lecture that night, and many people who were brahmacharis then and now sannyasis remembered that, what he spoke. And they said that he spoke about um, his preaching in the West and how it had happened and how he had started it and how at first he had tried so many different ways to preach to this kind of audience and that kind of audience. But then it became clear that it was the young people who were wandering aimlessly, bewildered and uh, disenfranchised from their families, who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had his eye on. And he said that um, he began to sing in the park. And um, he said that it was so like awful what he saw going on in the park that he would close his eyes and just chant very, very deeply and meditate on Nityananda Prabhu and the mercy that was coming. And then he said, he goes, so first one or two came, and then five, and then ten, and twenty, and a hundred and two hundred. He goes, and now it's a waterfall of them coming. He goes, but in the beginning, 
each and every one of those jivas, those young boys and girls from the wealthiest country of America, I had to drag them with my own hands out of the gutter. 